Joining us in studio is Texas head coach Lovey Smith. Coach, great to see you. And I know you want to win these games. It was a different situation yesterday. You're down 21 to nothing, but come back with a chance to take the lead late. What about that part of it? The ability to come back from a big deficit. Haven't done that yet. Didn't get over the top, but you did come back to force the issue some. When there is disappointment uh, from a loss, you do have to look at the positives that happen. And it's just that. We're down. And um, previous games, uh, you know, we haven't been down like that. And it showed an awful lot to come back against a good ball club, which we're able to do. Second half, uh, we defensively, we need to stop them. I think three times we're able to stop them. Offense had to score. And what we did, reality is we put ourselves in position. Fourth quarter, we have the ball with an opportunity to take the lead after being down by 21 points. I mean, I think that's something to build on. Eventually, we'll get that win. Coach, what do you think was, I want to say the turning point, but what kind of got you guys going? I mean, obviously, Damien has the long run to get it to 21-7. to seven. Was that sort of the spark that kind of got things going, or was there was it defensive stops in the second half? What kind of got things going in the second half? I think it's a combination of both. I mean, whenever you get, a, you know, of course, a, a long touchdown in there and you see how maybe just one of your teammates is playing, it can kind of ignite it a little bit. But the other part is, is, is this a 60-minute you know, game sure. or more? So you have to keep playing. They don't you know, name the winner after a quarter play or a half a play. And that played out that way. It's always, you know, we always want to, John, we want to start fast. Yep. And a part, that was a big emphasis on, you know, felt like we need to score the first one. Our defense, we needed to take the ball away or three and out, whatever. But it didn't work that way. But it's always about the finish. And if you play your best ball at the end of the game, you normally have an opportunity to win the game, which we did. Yeah, can you learn from these things? You mentioned it. You want to get off to a fast start. Oh, my gosh, you don't get off to a fast start. But you did respond as the game went on. Is that something you can take with you into future games? Hey, when adversity hits, we can overcome it within the course of the game, even though you're not there at the end, but at least you're getting through some of these moments as they occur. Yes, you absolutely can. And reality kind of hits you with that. And for our team going forward, we've been saying that. that yeah, that's coach talk a little bit. But that's exactly what happened yesterday. And it took all three phases. Defense had to make some stops. We didn't play our best game yesterday, but we had to make some stops, as I said. Special teams came up with that big, that big takeaway. We needed to steal a possession, which we were able to do. And then, ultimately, it's about offense putting points on the board. You know, we almost completed that comeback. Coach, it felt a lot like the Tennessee game last year. Week 18 last year. You got down, there was that one interference call at the end of the half that gave them, a, and they put them up 21 nothing. But the one thing also in that game, too, is it felt like when you got behind, I don't want to say there was no pressure on Davis, but he was kind of forced, all right, we got to get back in this thing. I got to do what I need to do. I don't know if it loosened him up or what it did, but it felt like Davis kind of, after Damian's run, kind of shocked him into place, and he started making some throws he had been making at that point. Did you kind of see it that way with Davis yesterday? Yeah, I, I, I saw Davis making some plays down there. I saw guys catching the ball. I saw the protection being better yep. down there, and I just thought everybody did their job a lot better. Uh, quarterback, of course, included once we got in that situation. Okay, Coach, you've coached against a lot of great quarterbacks. And going back to Tampa, you faced Dan Marino as an assistant coach. And you were on the same staff as Kurt Warner for a bit. And the list goes on and on. Coach against Brady, Aaron Rodgers many times. Herbert seems to have that kind of talent. I know it's early in his career. And I'm not going to ask you to rank him. But what is it like facing a great quarterback like that who can make throws from anywhere in any situation? I mean, it's tough. And uh, part of... You know, what happened yesterday a little bit is they did have a special guy on that side. He's got – and most people don't realize how big he is. I mean, he's tall, six six, whatever he is. You know, mm -hmm. yesterday seemed like he was six seven. you know. But he can make all the throws. But his mobility, he's mobile too. He can move around by time, of course, to make all of the throws, stand up strong in the pocket. So how he compares, I think it's safe to say most people that know football say that he's going to be one of the, you know, one of the greats to play the game. Coach, defensively, you talked about those stops in the second half. They get 27, but then for three consecutive drives, you, you slow them down. No points. You get the ball back to your offense. 
What was going right for your defense at that point? Was it all about execution? Was it some adjustments that y'all made at the half and during the quarter? What was kind of the key to kind of get the defense kind of back on track at that point? And that's why, well, to me, it's not like, you know, John, we didn't go in and change up what we sure. we we call a lot of what we call the first half. But that sense of urgency, the discipline that it takes to, for everybody to be doing their job all together, that's what we did. Guys played hard and just finished plays. I don't think there's – it's not a, a magic pill or yeah. anything. You just have to go back to uh, what you know works. And that's everybody doing their job, each play, and it takes everyone. Earlier when some, uh, some of the big plays were happening, it, it's normally one guy not doing what he's – one or two guys not doing what they're supposed to do. So that's how you get back in the game, and that's how we should be playing defense throughout. Last week we talked about third down conversions. You had a bunch of third and shorts that you wanted to make that you weren't able to. This week you're a little bit better in third down. I know you're not where you want to be, but it was different situations. Can you gauge that progress for us, Coach, and how that's going and what you're working on? Well, you're right. Last week we had a lot of third and ones. Those should be manageable, you know, plus for the offense, really, you know, going into those. We did have some more manageable ones yesterday, too, and for the most part it was a little better. And just pitch a third down, that keeps drives going. And how, you know, we're talking about the offense right now, but we've been, last week, we were really good defensively on third downs. You know, they converted 50% of the time on third downs against us. Of not letting the offense get back out there on the field, they have to go. We have to play complementary defense along with, with the offense, and we didn't do that yesterday. Coach, what is, when you think back to seeing Damian the first time and what he's given you now, do you think he'd be at this point when, when you initially saw him as a rookie with everybody had in the roster at the time, he's a rookie, we're through week four, and he's become a really big offensive threat. Do you kind of think he was kind of headed in that direction? When did you kind of know, okay, this guy's going to be one of our better offensive players this year? Well, I think everybody's been around Damon from training camp of seeing uh, when he walked in the building, just energy, uh, his love for the game. And then we got on the football field, we start to see it that way. I mean, he comes to work every day. Uh, you know, and I'm talking hard-nosed football player yep. that loves to run in between the tackles, can make you miss an open field, but that last dimension of his game of, that a, the great running backs need is be able to go the distance. So, uh, yeah, he's been a good football player for a period of time, and uh, he's still young, too. Did you think he had that juice? It looked like 24 had an angle on him, and then he blew that angle up. I, I, I knew he had good speed, but, you know, you have a – Perception and then reality. Reality yeah. says that he can go to he can go seventy five yards for a touchdown. Yeah, yeah. Went into overdrive, and it's funny because uh, he and Rex Burkhead seem to have a really good relationship. You have a ten year veteran, and you have a rookie. Can you discuss that a little bit? Rex had a nice game yesterday for himself as well. Yeah, I think in every mark in every position room, you need that. You need a, a, a guy that's been through it more than it's not a not a rookie coming in that can teach the young guys how to do it, and you have to have the right person doing that. Rex is a perfect example. Played in the years, you know, double-digit years for a reason. Takes care of his body on and off the football field. And just helping teach Damon and Troy, the young players, how to be a pro. And that role, big brother role, and working together, you know, on your role as a, as a teammate. And we have that. That's why right now we understand our record. But we understand what we have on our, who, what and who we have on the football team of getting guys – through these tough times that's been through it before. So Rex absolutely does that for Damon. Coach, you talked about finishing and now starting. And I know you said a little while ago, you said exactly what we were thinking about, and that's starting the game. You want to start the game off fast. But it feels like starting and finishing are sort of the same thing. It is playing your keys, being disciplined, those kind yeah. of things. I feel like start and finish are sort of the same thing. Is that kind of the way that you see it? And yeah. what's going to make it better going forward, you think? Well, well, you're right. We're highlighting it by saying starting fast, finishing strong. Well, there's so much football to go in there. Right. But that's just it. That's It's just saying that when the game starts, you need to be ready to do your job to the best of your ability. Yeah, there is discipline, uh, concentration uh, involved in all of it. And to be able to consistently do it right over a period of time. That's what it's about. Uh, from what I've seen, it's hard to be perfect every play, but to be locked in every play, I think that's definitely something that you can do. 
Coach, uh, a lot of listeners had questions on defensive holding. We saw it, I think, once before this season. It's a rare kind of penalty, but we had a couple of them yesterday. Can yeah. you talk about what goes into that and what you want to correct? Yeah, uh, especially when it's, uh, you know, in, within the line, interior of the line a little bit. It's, it's pretty simple. I mean, just picture, you know, our three technique, Malik Collins, you know, getting double team. And, when, and if the guard leaves him, you know, a lot of times you as defensive linemen, you have to get your hands on them and lock out. Right. And if they leave, sometimes it's kind of look like you're holding them a little bit. So that's not a, a, a defensive call that's, that's really called often, but that's what it's about. It's just restriction of someone trying to go away from you. Coach Jaguars this week, division game on yes. the road. Maybe the most important game you would play because, well, first of all, it's the next one, but it's also because of that. It's a division game. I know you haven't kind of gone into the Jaguars too much, but it's a team we saw last year. Uh, but they're a little bit different, added a few pieces here or there, but Trevor's still the quarterback. What did you see from Trevor last year that you've got to be concerned about, and what do you think about the Jags overall? Well, if we just, uh, well, overall, they're in a pretty good position. I know it was disappointing what happened yesterday, but it's a long season, but I mean, they've one of the, been one of the teams that people are talking about. We get to see them a little bit on the crossover, but uh, we know them. Uh, you know, George Warhoff, offensive line coach, uh, Joe Dan. Mm -hmm. I mean, our, two of our coaches, our, our safety coach, were uh, both, you know, from there. So we're familiar. But we played them a couple times, their division opponent. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is a real deal. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. As you mentioned, some of the free agent uh, additions. You know, offensively, Kirk, the receiver's a good player. Uh, offensive line, of course, they've tweaked it a little bit. And on the defensive side, you know, the first pick in the draft there, they put money into their defensive line. Uh, they've just upgraded the personnel, have an outstanding coach, of course. So it'll be a big challenge for us. Well, we know what happened there last year, but we talked about this with the Chargers, how last year has nothing to do with this year. But back out on the road, is this strange, the 17-game schedule? You have these nine road games. It just We're all getting used to it together. <laughs> Last year, you had nine home games. Yeah, but, you know, for us, Mark, it's just that I know who we play next week. Yeah. Or this week now. <laughs> right. You try not to look too far ahead, but you know who's coming up on the schedule. And we know a division opponent. We're going to go to Jacksonville each year. Um, and, and really, when you have a bad taste in your mouth and – and trying to get your first win, it doesn't really matter who you're playing, but to go into the division, it's always about the division. You know, we haven't lost in the division as we see it right now, so uh, we, need to, we need to get a win. Coach, when you are prepping for an opponent, I'm always curious, when, when do you really get kind of a first glance, like a first dive, true dive into the opponent you're about to face? Well, John, there's a lot of crossover that happens when you're preparing for teams in the sure. league. So you see that a little bit, and you take a look notice. But um, really, after uh, today, mm -hmm. I mean, after we you know evaluated and graded all the video, then we move over immediately. So we've moved over really already. We have some cleanup to do, you know, with the game. And uh, tomorrow the guys will come in. We'll really clean it up. But our mind is already really on Jacksonville now. Coach, we talked about some of the throws yesterday, but Nico catching that deep ball, 58 yes. yards, longest play in a passing game so far. Does that sort of break the seal maybe, give them confidence that down the line they can do that more and more? Because I know you saw some of that last year, but this is a pretty nice throw and a great opportunity for you that you capitalized on immediately afterwards. Yeah, I think first you can look at our team the same way. I mean, there's some things we need to do to get over that hump, we need to get that first win, but – yeah, that's definitely the case. Uh, we knew the talent was there. I mean, we saw Nico, of course, in the preseason go up. He's a big target. He has excellent hands. But you need to see it and for him to actually do it in a critical moment, too, where we needed to play. Big moment. He stood up strong and big then. Um, got a lot of talent, and hopefully we can continue to keep him involved. We're able to get Brandon Cooks involved a lot more. Just our receivers in general. And tight end wise, I mean, oh, with OJ and Jordan, what they're able to do too. So those guys are coming along. Coach, I know there's no guarantee of anybody coming off the injured reserve list, but this is the week that some could come back. How does that help you in some way, shape, or form that you can get a player, two, three, maybe back off that injured list this week? Well, if you just look at the injured list and injury list as a whole, I mean, there are players that 
coming into the season that were part of our plan. And the injury knocked them out of it for a while. And they're coming back, so we'll kind of look. And as soon as we can get them into the mix now, uh, again, even though they can come off then, we just never really know because you know they haven't been able to practice. So I'm just anxious when the players are healthy and ready to go to get them back on the practice field and see exactly where they are. Eventually, they got, they'll be suited up and helping us win. Well, you brought up preseason a moment ago, and it reminds me that Mason Shrek, one of the tight ends brought up because you have tight end injury issues, that might be the best advertisement for the importance of preseason games, right? He caught that TD late in L.A., right? And here he is playing in game four for you. It's not even down the line in week 17 or something like that. It just goes to show you every snap is important that time of year. Every snap is definitely important. We do tell the guys that then. I think also, Mark, when we say – you know, practice squad. Guys on the practice squad, most of them will end up being, having an opportunity to be elevated. Normally not this early in the season, but that's how it works. And then you need to be ready, like Mason was when your team call, you know, calls you up. And um, he did some good things. Yesterday. Was it strange when you coached in college and you have all these players <laughs> at your disposal? It, it, it was a little bit different then, for sure. Uh, but, you know, in college, the guys you have, that's pretty much who you have – because there's no waiver wire or anything like that. In right. the NFL, of course, you, you always go, can can have someone ready to go. Yeah, that's a good point. There's no during-the-season transfer portal you can take advantage of. No, but you, when you bring players in, Coach, you bring up a great point. When you bring players in and they haven't been in the organization, like Jordan Akins has at least been in the organization. He knows yes. where the bathrooms are. He knows where the cafeteria is. But the offense was probably a little bit new to him. What's kind of the biggest goal in, in getting those guys ready? I mean, how much do you give to them of the of the playbook and get them ready? Or is it just, this is what you need to know for this week, and we'll just keep adding as we go along? How do you kind of handle when you get somebody in that's not from the organization, if you will? It's hard when you get somebody from the organization. As you mentioned, if you hear, um, they're going there in all the meetings. So yeah. Even though they haven't played, they should be ready to go. But when you bring somebody in from the outside, first you kind of look at who you bring in. Maybe what system they've been in. Is, is, would this be familiar to them? Right. Uh, so you look at that, and then it's just it's finals week. You start cramming. <laughs> yeah. That's what you start doing. From the moment they get in the building, yeah. that's what you start doing. And um, and you just look at um, tight ends in general. You know, OJ didn't go through camp with yeah. Garden. Those guys weren't in camp with us, but they picked it up fairly quick. Coach, we always make a big deal, and, and rightfully so, about home versus road and everything. But you've played two road games. You've been in that yeah. tough environment so far. Doesn't that help you, especially with some of the young guys who haven't been in the NFL? Doesn't that help them get ready for a, a situation like Jacksonville? Back out on the road now, we know what to expect, at least more of what to expect in terms of the environment. I absolutely think that's why I think it's important uh, preseasons are of having an away game. For the guys mm-hmm. that don't know. So we got that out of the way. Went to L.A. for the young guys, the Damons, the Jalen Petries, the, uh, Derek Stingley, all the young, they know that. And then also for us now, once the season started, I mean, we've gone to Denver. We've gone to Chicago. So we kind of know the routine of going on the road, and um, it should be like another game for us this week. Coach, you've always said to us, you're a football junkie. And yes. there's there's no doubt. I, we were calling a game the other day, and all of a sudden you popped up on – on TV with Deepy. Thank you for that, by the way. That made the broadcast really cool. But then you stuck around and watched the rest of the game. I mean, you just you just hung out there. I mean, obviously, you're the most noticeable person in the entire building. But you hung around and watched the football game. I, it's not as if we didn't believe you. But you got a game the next day, and yet you're there you are watching college football. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, it helps when it's in your stadium. And, <laughs> and, it, 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 it all, and we have meetings coming up a little bit later. Mm-hmm. It also helps, though, that... You know, when you have a history with someone, I mean, I'm from East Texas, you know, Stephen F. Austin, Sam Houston State. I know Sam Houston is getting ready to move up. I know about those programs. And to see them, it's nothing like rivalry games in any sport. But rivalry games in football, that was an excellent college environment Mm -hmm. at our stadium. And I wasn't the only one. At the end of the game, I know our our offensive line, we had – Tristan McCullough, some of the guys yeah. that you know have a connection to him. We're all down in that tunnel watching a great game. Uh, the Ask Coach Question of the Week presented by Amogee Bank. Coach, and this is really for my benefit as much as anything, uh, people are noticing you're in outstanding shape. Have you changed over the years your routine? <laughs> what can you share with us about your routine to stay in great shape? 
Well, I, you know, we can always be in better shape. I'm going to throw that out there. But I, um, I do have a routine. I'm a routine guy. I eat a lot of times. Eat the same thing each day. Um, and I, you know, once the season starts, it's hard to just really get into that marathon training. But uh, you know, you have an opportunity. You know, we're going to be on the field for a couple of hours, and I do something before practice each day too. So I try to watch what I eat as, mm -hmm. as much as possible. But once you start getting old, every day counts. So there's nothing like being healthy. You know, we preach it constantly to our guys on health, what they put in their body. And it'd be one thing to just be giving a lot, a lot of lip service. I want them to see me living that way, too. If you were going to cheat, if you were going <laughs> to cheat just a little bit that day, what's it going to be? I'm in Texas, and that'd be hard. You know, <laughs> my background growing up, you know, uh, we fry a lot of things down yeah. here, but I try not to cheat too much. Well, wait, do you lift weights? Do you do cardio? We got to know, Coach. Um, I, I think cardio is important. I think lifting is important. And the thing about lifting, you don't have to have weights. You know, I, I used to rely on weights a long time ago, and I used to rely on machines a long time ago. But there are some times when you don't have that. That's why you can always walk, mm -hmm. jog, run. Push-ups. You can always, and as far as strength is concerned, Push-ups. I'm a proponent of push-ups. I try to, you know, daily to push-ups. And if I tell you how many, it'll it'll make it sound like I'm bragging. So I won't tell you how many. <laughs> I, but, uh, I really don't even you know. You can if I always know. do that. There's <laughs> ways to stay in shape. Absolutely. Outstanding, Coach. Thanks a lot for joining us. Good luck Time this week. All. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.